Okay, um, good evening. So I'm Anuprita Aurora, and the title of my study, Do You Squeeze Before You Sneeze? And this is to do with measuring intra-abdominal pressures for urodynamics. Now, I'm currently doing my master's with the Auckland Bioengineering Institute um, with the public floor group. And before I answer any questions or I answer anything about my research, let's just have a little role play. For those of you who are genetically or genitally incapable, imagine yourself as a woman, a picture-perfect, dignified lady, just like Mrs. Bree van der Kamp. Coming up. There we go. From the very famous show, Desperate Housewives. Now, Brie is said to be the definition of class, perfection, and dignity. And now, let's imagine, hypothetically, let's say, Brie has a secret condition, urinary incontinence. This would mean she has absolutely no control over when she would start leaking or urinating. Can you imagine the impact this would have on the reputation of Brie, who is so prim and proper? Urinary incontinence. About 10% of the population is affected by this condition. Women are four times more likely to suffer from it. New Zealand has 200,000 women who have this condition, and yet it goes unnoticed because of the social stigma it carries. This is a picture of the female bladder. Now the bladder, as we know, it holds our fluid, and the urethra is the tube via which it flows out of our system. In the normal condition, the bladder muscles, they're quite relaxed and they hold the fluid really well. And the urethra is clamped shut together by the sphincter muscles. It's only when we choose to void that these muscles relax and the fluid leaks out, comes out more like it. Now the area my project deals with is called stress urinary incontinence, which means incontinence caused because of exercise or activity. Now when we go about our daily exercises like sneezing or coughing or jumping, for example, we create an increase in intra-abdominal pressure, that's pressure inside our abdomen. And this can sometimes place extra pressure on our bladder. Now with females who have weak bladder muscles or weak urethral muscles, they're not able to hold the fluid against this pressure. So what you get is involuntary leakage. Can you imagine the lives of women who are affected by this disorder? Women are not able to lead normal social lives. They stop playing with their children, they stop exercising. And what you get is basically loss of personality and loss of character. And therefore, I ask the question, for how long can you squeeze before you sneeze? Now, urodynamics is an area which deals with measuring these intra-abdominal pressures and measuring pressures in your bladder to see what causes incontinence and what treatment methods can we provide for it. Now, in a normal urodynamics clinic, the way intra-abdominal pressure is measured is by, is by placing a rectal sensor up your rectum. And this is the area of my research, measuring intra-abdominal pressure. Now, in the clinic, as I said, the sensor goes up your rectum and is connected to a computer via long water-filled tubes. The idea is to get the patient to cough or jog and to see what activities and what pressures cause leakage. There are quite a few limitations with the system, though. As I said, the tubes are water-filled and they are long. So the pressure signal can get displaced or dampened as it moves down the water tubes, motion artifacts. Also, if nurses are having a really busy day, they're not going to check for air bubbles in the system, and this causes inaccuracies. Then there is peristalsis, which means rectal contractions. They cause interference with the pressure readings. Finally, the sensor goes up a really uncomfortable hole, and most of our patients are females, elderly females, who complain about the system being uncomfortable and often painful. So the clinicians at Middlemore Hospital, they approached us to see if we could come up with a better way to measure this intra-abdominal pressure. We've known that the vagina is also a potential source of measuring this pressure. So what we have devised is this novel intravaginal pressure device. And the way this works is, on the top you have your silicon balloon, which is fluid filled, and it has a pressure sensor placed in it. The sensor runs all the way down to your transmitter and battery. 
The idea is the silicone balloon goes inside the vagina, the transmitter is connected, it's just taped onto your thigh. You repeat the same protocol, but the difference is because the system is wireless, all the pressure signals are transmitted wirelessly to a receiver within a 10 meter radius in the room. The other part um, of this device that is acceptable to us is the silicone balloon is shaped, it's shaped to follow the contours of the vagina and the material we use is thin and compliant. So patients actually don't feel this inside their body and it helps in comfort and retention. So my job was to further develop this device because our long-term aim is to provide a different way or an alternative way to measure intra-abdominal pressure as opposed to the rectal system. So I'm looking at how can I improve this device and design. So the first area I dealt with was looking at the silicon balloon, improving its design and production methods. Now, the average length of a vagina is about eight to nine centimeters, and the initial balloon's length we had was about 5.5 centimeters. That's for a first prototype we had. And we, didn't, we realized that pelvic floor muscles, they may cause interactions or interferences with our pressure readings, which is why we decided to reduce it to four centimeters. My next part was to look at production of these balloons. The old method of creating these balloons was, now, if you can imagine water, the way it sets in ice cream, I mean ice tubes, ice trays. The same way we made a mold with perspex sheets and we milled the design of our silicon balloons onto it. We clamped two sheets together, we inserted some silicon in the middle and we put this in an oven. But it takes 24 hours for the silicon to set because the oven we had only worked at 35 degrees. So over 24 hours all we got was one balloon and that too we had two pieces of silicon which we had to seal together and then place the sensor. It was highly inefficient. Luckily for us, the Institute purchased a silicon transfer press machine. And my job was to create a mold which would be compatible with this machine. That's the mold on top. And that's a picture of me holding a really cool machine gun. What this is, is um, it's a silicon mixing machine. And I'm using it now to play, in the picture, to place silicon into the transfer press machine. I then place my mold on top of it. The machine clamps together. The pressure is high enough to inject the silicon into my mold, and within two minutes, because the machine operates at 135 degrees Celsius, I get a balloon which is sealed on three sides, and one side is left open for me to place the sensor. So this has helped us improve our productivity by at least 100 times in terms of timing. So future work with this device. Now that I know I can improve the production method, we did try it in a few volunteers to see if, it re if it's retainable. You know, we did reduce the size of the balloon, and it was. So our next step is now to do some clinical trials. We have ethics to test our device in 24 patients in a proper urodynamics clinic. What we aim to do is place it alongside the rectal clinic, I mean the rectal system, so we can compare the measurements, the retention, and the comfort. Also things I aim to improve on, I want to build um, a charger so I can charge my device wirelessly in the clinic. I'm also looking at building a user interface so, I can, um, so we can have data collection and data presentation. Remember, we're trying to make our own system, so what we need is our own user interface, our own collection systems, our own device. Um, and because we aim to commercialize this device, sometime in the future, I'm also looking at what regulations are necessary to do so, especially for the US and Europe markets. So, to conclude, we have successfully created a prototype to measure intra-abdominal pressure. And the long-term aim, as I said, was to use it as a replacement for the rectal catheter method, at least for women only. And a future extension of this device could be to use it to check how exercises affect the pelvic floor organs. Just for a summary, you say what? I say a pressure device. You say where? I say shove it up there. And you say why? Well, ladies, it's because we are worth it. Thank you. <laughs>